Hello, welcome to Jesus for All 2, God's Word, Your Daily Bread, the Bible, for February 14th, 2023. Here, you will hear daily readings of God's Word, the Bible, the Bread of Life, with the goal of hearing all of the Bible by the end of December 2023, pleasing the Heavenly Father and increasing our faith. Because without faith, Hebrews 11.6 lets us know, it is impossible to please him. For he who comes to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. And the book of Romans chapter 10 verse 17 reads, So then faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. And 2 Corinthians 5, 7, For we walk by faith, not by sight, living our lives in a manner consistent with our confident belief in God's promises. And Romans 10, 8, But what does it say? The word is near you, in your mouth, and in your heart. That is the word of the message, the basis of faith which we preach. And the book of John, chapter 12, Mm-hmm. No, let's do. Well, the book of John fifteen seven reads, If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you will ask what you desire, and it shall be done for you. And we know that John six sixty three. it is the spirit who gives life. The flesh profits nothing. The words that I speak to you are spirit, and they are life. Hallelujah. And so the words of life we will hear today, February 14th, are Psalm 52. The New Testament reading will be from the book of Acts, chapter 18, verse 1 through chapter 19, verse 41. And the Old Testament reading will be from the book of Exodus, chapter 23, verse 1 through chapter 24, verse 18. All scriptures were taken from the New King James Version of the Bible, copyright 1982 by Thomas Nelson, Incorporated, used by permission, all rights reserved, unless otherwise noted. And there was a scripture reading today from the Amplified Version of the Bible. I'd like to thank every listener to Jesus for all, too. I pray that the Word of God has been healing you and delivering you from every destruction in your life. Hallelujah. And now Psalm 52. And it reads, Why do you boast in evil, O mighty man? The goodness of God endures continually. Your tongue devises destruction like a sharp razor. Working deceitfully, you love evil more than good, lying rather than speaking righteousness. Selah. 4. You love all devouring words, you deceitful tongue. God shall likewise destroy you forever. He shall take you away and pluck you out of your dwelling place and uproot you from the land of the living. Selah. 6. The righteous also shall see and fear and will laugh at him, saying, verse 7, Here is the man who did not make God his strength, but trusted in the abundance of his riches and strengthened himself in his wickedness. 8. But I am like a green olive tree in the house of God. I trust in the mercy of God forever and ever. Verse 9 and last. I will praise you forever because you have done it. And in the presence of your saints, I will wait on your name for it is good. Amen. And in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, this word is already blessed. As we pray in Jesus' name is every hearer. And now the New Testament reading, continuing today in the book of Acts, chapter 18, hallelujah, the New Testament reading, the book of Acts, chapter 18, and it reads, after these things, Paul departed from Athens and went to Corinth. And he found a certain Jew named Aquila, born in Pontus, who had recently come from Italy with his wife Priscilla, because Clodius had commanded all the Jews to depart from Rome, and he came to them. 
three. So because he was of the same trade, he stayed with them and worked, for by occupation they were tent makers. And he reasoned in the synagogue every Sabbath and persuaded both Jews and Greeks. When Silas and Timothy had come from Macedonia, Paul was compelled by the Spirit and testified to the Jews that Jesus is the Christ. 6. But when they opposed him and blasphemed, he shook his garments and said to them, Your blood be upon your own heads. I am clean. From now on I will go to the Gentiles. 7. And he departed from there and entered the house of a certain man named Justice who worshipped God, and whose house was next door to the synagogue. When Crispus, the ruler of the synagogue, believed on the Lord with all his household, and many of the Corinthians hearing believed, and were baptized. Now the Lord spoke to Paul that night, the night, in the night by a vision. Do not be afraid, but speak, and do not keep silent. 10. For I am with you, and no one will attack you to hurt you, for I have many people in this city. 11. And he continued there a year and six months, teaching the word of God among them. When Galilee, Galilo, Galio was proconsul of Achaia, the Jews with one accord rose up against Paul and brought him to the judgment seat. 13. Saying, This fellow persuades men to worship God contrary to the law. And when Paul was about to open his mouth, Gallo said to the Jews, If it were a matter of wrongdoing or wicked crimes, O Jews, there would be a reason why I should bear with you. 15. But if it is a question of words and names and your own law, look to it yourselves, for I do not want to be a judge of such matters. 16. And he drove them from the judgment seat. 17. Then all the Greeks took Sosthenes, the ruler of the synagogue, and beat him about the judgment seat. But Gallio took no notice of these things. 18. So Paul still remained a good while. Then he took leave of the brethren and sailed for Syria, and Priscilla and Aquila were with him. He had his hair cut off at Centria, for he had taken a vow. And he came to his Ephesus and left them there. But he himself entered the synagogue and reasoned with the Jews. 20. When they asked him to stay a, long, a longer time with them, he did not consent. 21, but took leave of them, saying, I must by all means keep this coming feast in Jerusalem, but I will return again to you, God willing. And he sailed from Ephesus. 22, and when he had landed at Caesarea and gone up and greeted the church, he went down to Antioch. After he had spent some time there, he departed and went over to the region of Galatia and Phygia in order, strengthening all the disciples. 24. Now a certain Jew named Apollos, born at Alexandria, an eloquent man and mighty in the scriptures, came to Ephesus. This man had been instructed in the way of the Lord, and being fervent in spirit, he spoke and taught accurately the things of the Lord, though he knew only the baptism of John. 26. So he began to speak boldly in the synagogue. When Aquila and Priscilla heard him, they took him aside and explained to him the way of God more accurately. 27. And when he desired to cross to Achaia, the brethren wrote, exhorting the disciples to receive him. And when he arrived, he greatly helped those who had believed through grace. For he vigorously refuted the Jews publicly, showing from the scriptures that Jesus is the Christ. Chapter 19. And it happened, while Apollos was at Corinth, that Paul, having passed through the upper regions, came to Ephesus, and finding some disciples, he said to them, Did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? So they said to him, We have not so much as heard whether there is a Holy Spirit. 3. And he said to them, Into what then were you baptized? So they said, Into John's baptism. Verse 4, Then Paul said, John indeed baptized with a baptism of repentance, saying to the people that they should believe on him who would come after him, that is, on Christ Jesus. When they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. And when Paul had laid hands on them, the Holy Spirit came upon them, 
and they spoke with tongues and prophesied. 7. Now the men were about twelve in all. And he went into the synagogue and spoke boldly for three months, reasoning and persuading concerning the things of the kingdom of God. 9. Now when some were hardened and did not believe, but spoke evil of the way before the multitude, he departed from them and withdrew the disciples, reasoning daily in the school of Tyrannus. 10. And this continued for two years, so that all who dwelt in Asia heard the word of the Lord Jesus, both Jews and Greeks. 11. Now God worked unusual miracles by the hands of Paul, so that even handkerchiefs or aprons were brought from his body to the sick, and the diseases left them, and the evil spirits went out of them. Then some of the itinerant Jewish exorcists took it upon themselves to call the name of the Lord Jesus over those who had evil spirits, saying, We exercise you by, the, by Jesus, whom Paul preaches. 14. Also, there were seven sons of Sceva, a Jewish chief priest, who did so. 15. And the evil spirits answered and said, Jesus I know, and Paul I know, but who are you? Then the men in whom the evil spirit was leaped on them, overpowered them, and prevailed against them, so that they fled out of that house naked and wounded. 17. This became known both to all the Jews and Greeks dwelling in Ephesus, and fear fell on them all, and the name of the Lord Jesus was magnified. In, and many who had believed came confessing and telling their deeds. 19. Also many of those who had practiced magic brought their books together and burned them in the sight of all, and they counted up the value of them, and it totaled 50,000 pieces of silver. 20. So the word of the Lord grew mightily and prevailed. 21. When these things were accomplished, Paul purposed in the spirit, when he had passed through Macedonia and Achaia, to go to Jerusalem, saying, After I have been there, I must also see Rome. So he sent into Macedonia two of those who ministered to him, Timothy and Erastus, but he himself stayed in Asia for a time. And about that time, there arose a great com commotion about the way. For a certain man named Demetrius, a silversmith, who made silver shrines of Diana, brought no small profit to the craftsmen. He called them together with the workers of similar occupation and said, Men, you know that we have our prosperity by this trade. 26. Moreover, you see and hear that not only at Ephesus, but throughout almost all Asia, this Paul has persuaded and turned away many people, saying that they are not gods which are made with hands. 27. So not only is this trade of ours in danger of fail, falling into disrepute, but also the temple of the great goddess Diana may be despised and her magnificence destroyed, whom all Asia and the world worship. 28. Now when they heard this, they were full of wrath, and cried out, saying, Great is Diana of the Ephesians. So the whole city was filled with confusion, and rushed into the theater with one accord, having seized Gauss and Aristarchus, Macedonians, Paul's travel companions. And, Paul, and when Paul wanted to go into the people, the disciples would not allow him. Then some of the officials of Asia, who were his friends, sent to him pleading that he would not venture into the theater. Some therefore cried one thing and some another, for the assembly was confused, and most of them did not know why they had come together. 33. And they drew Alexander out of the multitude, the Jews putting him forward, and Alexander motioned with his hand, and wanted to make his defense to the people. But when they found out that he was a Jew, all with one voice cried out for about two hours, Great is Diana of the Ephesians. And when the city clerk had quieted the crowd, he said, Men of Ephesus, what man is there who does not know that the city of the Ephesians is temple guardian of the great Di goddess Diana and of the image which fell down from Zeus? 36. Therefore, since these things cannot be denied, you ought to be quiet and do nothing rashly. 37. For you have brought these men here who are neither robbers of temples nor blasphemers of your goddess. Therefore, if Demetrius and his fellow craftsmen have a case against anyone, the courts are open, 
and there are proconsuls. Let them bring charges against one another. 39. But if you have any other inquiry to make, it shall be determined in the lawful assembly. 40. For we are in danger of being called in question for today's uproar, there being no reason which we may give to account for this disorderly gathering. Verse 41 and last. And when he had said these things, he dismissed the assembly. Amen. And the word of God is already blessed. As we pray in the name of Jesus Christ, is every hearer. Hallelujah and glory to God. The word is blessed. And now the Old Testament reading. Continuing today in the book of Exodus, chapter 23. The Old Testament reading, the book of Exodus, chapter 23. And it reads, You shall not circulate a false report. Do not put your hand with the wicked to be an unrighteous witness. You shall not follow a crowd to do evil. Nor shall you testify in a dispute so as to turn aside after many to pervert justice. You shall not show partiality to a poor man in his dispute. If you meet your enemy's ox or his donkey going astray, you shall surely bring it back to him again. If you see the donkey of one who hates you lying under its burden, and you would refrain from helping it, you shall surely help him with it. 6. You shall not pervert the judgment of your poor in his dispute. 7. Keeping yourself far from a false matter, do not kill the innocent and righteous, for I will not justify the wicked. And you shall take no bribe, for a bribe blinds the discerning and perverts the words of the righteous. 9. Also you shall not oppress a stranger, for you know that the heart of a stranger, for you know the heart of a stranger, because you were strangers in the land of Egypt. Verse 10. Six years you shall sow your land and gather in its produce. But the seventh year you shall let it rest and lie fallow, that the poor of your people may eat, and what they leave the beast of the field may eat. In like manner you shall do with your vineyard and your olive grove. Twelve. Six days you shall do your work, and on the seventh day you shall rest, that your ox and your donkey may rest, and the son of your female servant and the stranger may be refreshed. And in all that I have said to you, be circumspect, and make no mention of the names of other gods, nor let it be heard from your mouth. 14. Three times you shall keep a feast to me in the year. You shall keep the feast of unleavened bread. You shall eat unleavened bread seven days, as I commanded you at the time appointed in the month of Abib. For it, in it you came out of Egypt. None shall appear before me empty. 16. And the feast of harvest, the first fruits of your labor, which you have sown in the field, and the feast of ingathering at the end of the year, which you have gathered in the, in the fruit of your labors from the field. Verse 17. Three times in the year all your males shall appear before the Lord God. You shall not offer the blood of my sacrifice with leavened bread, nor shall the fat of my sacrifice remain until morning. The first of the first fruits of your land you shall bring into the house of the Lord your God. You shall not boil a young goat in its mother's milk. 20. Behold, I send an angel before you to keep you in the way and to bring you into the place which I have prepared. Beware of him and obey his voice. Do not provoke him, for he will not pardon your transgressions, for my name is in him. 22. But if you indeed obey his voice and do all that I speak, then I will be an enemy to your enemies and an adversary to your adversaries. 23. For my angel will go before you and bring you in to the Amorites and the Hittites and the Perizzites and the Canaanites and the Hivites and the Jebusites, and I will cut them off. 24. You shall not bow down to their gods, nor serve them, nor do according to their works, but you shall utterly overthrow them and completely break down their sacred pillars. So you shall serve the Lord your God, and he will bless your bread and your water, and I will take sickness away from the midst of you. 26. No one shall suffer miscarriage or be barren in your land. I will fulfill the number of your days. 
27. I will send my fear before you. I will cause confusion among the people to whom you come. And will make all your enemies turn their backs to you. And I will send hornets before you, which shall drive out the Hivite, the Canaanite, and the Hivite, and the Hittite from before you. I will not drive them out from before you in one year, lest the land become desolate and the beasts of the field become too numerous for you. 30. Little by little I will drive them out from before you, until you have increased and you inherit the land. And I will set your bounds from the Red Sea to the sea, Philistia, and from the desert to the river. For I will deliver the inhabitants of the land into your hand, and you shall drive them out before you. You shall make no covenant with them, nor with their gods. They shall not dwell in your land, lest they make you sin against me. For if you serve their gods, it will surely be a snare to you. Chapter 24 Now he said to Moses, Come up to the Lord, you and Aaron, Nadab, and Abihu, and seventy of the elders of Israel, and worship from afar. And Moses alone shall come near the Lord, but they shall not come near, nor shall the people go up with him. 3. So Moses came and told the people all the words of the Lord and all the judgments. And all the people answered with one voice and said, All the words which the Lord has said, we will do. And Moses wrote all the words of the Lord, and he rose early in the morning and built an altar at the foot of the mountain, and twelve pillars according to the twelve tribes of Israel. 5. Then he sent young men of the children of Israel who offered burnt offerings and sacrifice peace offerings of oxen to the Lord. And Moses took half the blood and put it in basins, and half the blood he sprinkled on the altar. 7. Then he took the book of the covenant and read in the hearing of the people, and they said, All that the Lord has said, we will do and be obedient. And Moses took the blood, sprinkled it on the people, and said, This is the blood of the covenant which the Lord has made with you. According to all these words. 9. Then Moses went up also Aaron, Nadab, and Abihu, and seventy of the elders of Israel. 10. And they saw the God of Israel, and there was under his feet, as it were, a paved work of sapphire stone, and it was like the very heavens in its clarity. But on the nobles of the children of Israel he did not lay his hand. So they saw God, and they ate and drank. Verse 12, Then the Lord said to Moses, Come up to me on the mountain, and be there, and I will give you tablets of stone, and the law, and the commandments which I have written, that you may teach them. 13, So Moses arose from his assistant Joshua, and Moses went up to the mountain of God. And he said to the elders, Wait here for us until we come back to you. Indeed, Aaron and Hur are with you. If any man has a difficulty, let him go to them. 15. Then Moses went up into the mountain, and a cloud covered the mountain. Now the glory of the Lord rested on Mount Sinai, and the cloud covered it six days, and on the seventh day he called to Moses out of the midst of the cloud. 17. The sight of the glory of the Lord was like consuming fire on the top of the mountain in the eyes of the children of Israel. Verse 18 and last. So Moses went into the midst of the cloud and went up into the mountain, and Moses was on the mountain forty days and forty nights. Amen. And in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, this word is already blessed. As we pray in the name of Jesus Christ, is every hero. And the book of Psalm, verse 1, chapter 107 and verse 20 reads, He sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destructions. Amen. Hallelujah. Psalm 107, verse 20. He sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destructions. Amen. And it reads the same in the Amplified. And now Psalm 23. In the New King James Versions, 
The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup runs over. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. And let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, thank you that you have sent your Holy Son, Jesus, to be our shepherd, that we shall not want. And Father, we thank you in the name of Jesus Christ for making us to lie down in green pastures, for leading us beside the still waters, for leading us in the paths of righteousness for your name's sake. Father, we thank you that though we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, we will fear no evil, for you are with us. Your rod and your staff, they comfort us. In the name of Jesus, we thank you for preparing a table before us in the presence of our enemies, for anointing our heads with oil and causing our cups to run over. In Jesus' name, we thank you. We thank you that surely goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives, and we will dwell in the house of, your, of the Lord, our Savior and King, the Heavenly Father, forever. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen, amen, amen. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Father.